Welcome, welcome, everybody. I am Denise Chikudo, and... And I'm Kate Jones. Hello. Thanks for joining us today to our workshop, Learning to be Centered During Challenging Times. For the first 15 minutes, I'm going to be talking about acupressure and some calming points to help you during this challenging time and Kate will be discussing. I'm going to take my time as a body-centered life coach to introduce uh, a little bit about the function of the vagus nerve and um, how it functions to keep us regulated and balanced and then give, um, give a few simple exercises with sound and movement of the face. Great. And there'll be time for questions and answers at the end of both of our sections today. And if you'd like to um, give us, if you'd like to ask us, ask us some questions, you can put it in the chat box and I'll tell you where that is. At the bottom of your screen, take your mouse and hover over the little box that says chat. And if you click on it, the chat box will come up and you can chat to me or Kate privately, or you can also chat to everybody in the meeting. And I'm muting everybody except for Kate <laughs> um, uh, right now as you enter. And if you're on a phone call, please be sure to uh, mute yourself because I don't think I can do that myself from here. And Kate and has some housekeeping too. Yeah, I just wanted to give you guys one uh, simple clue here to navigate <clears throat> because we're using different slides. And if you uh, would like to look more closely at a slide, um, there's a little process that can make that happen for you so you see it more enlarged. You go to the screen that you want to enlarge. It could be a speaker, could be graphic information but you uh, go to the upper right hand corner and there's three little dots. So you click on that and you'll get a drop down <clears throat> menu and you would pick pin video. <clears throat> and that will choose that slide to be dominant on the screen. And then <clears throat> you can unpin it by doing the same thing as, the, as our, as our uh, process goes on here. And uh, just to reiterate what Denise said, this video will be made, this class will be made available <clears throat> and we can share the link with you. It'll be posted in our business Facebook and also on YouTube. Right, Denise? Yes. Okay. And we'll send the link. If you are unable to make uh, one of the next, the following two sessions, you can catch up on the recording as soon as we have it available. And please, of course, be sure to share it with your friends, invite your friends to the next two sessions and like our pages as well. We'd really appreciate it. So. And let me just say right yes. there Denise, that uh, we will, we're doing this teaching uh, how to stay centered during challenging times in three episodes, uh, each of them flowing one today and then the two remaining Thursdays um, of May at noon. So join us. Thank you, Kate. And we decided to do this in three parts because we wanted to honor the fact that Zoom fatigue is real and we all have it about this point. Maybe we already had it a, a month ago <laughs> because we're sheltering in place. Um, a lot of us are on video calls every day now and we thought that 45 minutes would be a good limit each time to do our, our segments so that you can not feel like you're trapped watching videos all day. We want to help encourage calm 
and regulated states. We don't want to make you feel more stressed because you're in front of this video for hours and hours. Alrighty. Anything else, Kate, before we get started? No, I'm just looking forward to, to our teaching. Please Thanks. go ahead. Thanks. All right. I am Denise Chiquito. I'm a licensed acupuncturist and Chinese herbalist, and I work in the San Francisco Bay Area. I have offices in San Francisco and in Alameda, California. And today I'm going to talk about some acupressure points that are really good for you to help, help remain calm. But I guess I should also say that I've been an acupuncturist for about 15 years and I started school, I went to school in Los Angeles and then moved up to the Bay Area and love it here and I'm very glad to be doing a job that I love so so much. Next slide please. So we're going to go over just a few acupressure points today and I'm going to talk about ear acupressure and some other things you can do with acupressure and we're going to relate it to the vagus nerve a little bit too which Kate will be talking about more in depth in her segment. So stomach 36, if I could only do one acupuncture point, if I were on the desert island and I only had one acupuncture needle, even if I didn't have an acupuncture needle, I could use my finger to do this acupressure on this point. Stomach 36 is one of the most important points on the body. It's on the leg, on the lower leg below the knee. We'll start with telling you where it is. The easiest way to find it is the, um, the bone in front of your leg, in the front of your leg is your tibia. You run your finger up the front of your leg bone and just below the knee, it'll naturally fall out. Your finger will naturally fall to the side, to the outside of your, outside of your leg. And in that divot there is stomach 36. Now you don't have to be exactly on the point there. It's a pretty big point energetically. It's about the size of a dollar coin. So you're not going to miss it. <laughs> and the way you want to do acupressure is firm, steady pressure. You can use your finger, you can use your thumb, you can use a knuckle. You can also use the closed tip of a pen. Yes, it's below your kneecap. Below your kneecap, Robin. Um, you follow the, the bone up your leg and then it will fall to the outside of your leg below the kneecap. This point you want to do firm steady pressure on the acupressure point with your finger like I said or you can use the closed tip of a pen. Probably don't want to use an open pen or else you'll have a lot of ink or magic marker on you. And firm steady pressure for about uh, one to two minutes and you can do it on each side, each leg. It's bilateral point. And this point is so, so good for helping strengthen our immune system, which is so important right now. The benefit of Chinese medicine, the best thing we can do right now to help people is to strengthen your immune system. And this point does it for sure. It strengthens the energy of your body, it helps with digestion, and it helps lift your mood if you're feeling depressed. It's a really great point. It's a really good go-to point. Yin Tong. So if you've ever done this, you found Yin Tong. It's right between your eyebrows and sort of in the midpoint between your eyebrows. It is a really great calming point. I do this point on everybody who comes into my office, but you can do acupressure on it. Now, because it's on your face, you might not want to use a closed tip of a pen because you might leave a mark. You can just do acupressure with your finger. For, you know, one minute or so, whenever you think about it to add some calm during your day. Yin Tong is called Spirit Palace and it really is a wonderful point for calming the spirit, calming you for, from anxiety. It also is really great to do before going to sleep if you suffer from sleep issues, like if you have insomnia, it really will help to calm you so you can fall asleep better. 
and I'm going to pin the video so I can see this a little bit bigger. Yes, it's a really good point to calm the spirit of the heart. That's yin tang. So now we're going to talk about the ear. And there are points in the ear for all the parts of the body. You can see on this slide, it's a representation of what the ear looks like with um, a baby, upside down baby on the ear, imposed on the ear. And so all the points for the head are down by the earlobe and the feet are up higher on the ear, as you can see there. As a matter of fact, the traditional point for, um, for piercing your ears on the earlobe is the point that's good for your eyes. And that's been done for thousands of years. But of course, nowadays people are um, getting ear piercings on lots of different parts of the ear. So Dr. Paul Nogier, a French doctor, made this system, discovered this system of the ear and the acupressure points in the ear. And you can see all of the acupressure points that are represent, representing the organs, the major organs of the body. And they're inside the little divot that you can see externally that is called, we call the concha in anatomy terms. And this is the place where the auricular branch, the ear branch of the vagus nerve can be accessed. And we'll hear more about the vagus nerve from Kate in a little while. This map is the one that acupuncturists use when we're trying to find the acupressure points on the ear. And when I send you acupressure charts, like I do with some of my um, AccuCare kits, and you'll get acupressure guides with you, with the kits, and you'll see where the points are that you're supposed to be doing acupressure on yourself. So the ear, you can do acupressure between your thumb and your index finger, just sort of rub really lightly with your ear between your thumb and your index finger. And if you're feeling stressed and you don't have a guide, just rub your ears. I promise you, you'll get some relief. It's very calming and very soothing just to rub your ears, even if you don't have this guide in front of you. And there are different systems of ear acupressure points. There's Chinese, French, and Vietnamese that are used widely around the world. And the one that I use is this Chinese map. So you can do acupressure, like I said, with your fingers. You can also take a little bit of um, diluted essential oils. I always, always, always stress diluted essential oils to make sure that they don't irritate your skin. And I'll be sending you some links in the show notes about how to dilute essential oils safely. So for the ear, you could use any essential oil that's really calming to you. And I also recommend for the other points I've shown for yin tang here and for stomach 36 on the lower leg. Um, for the ear and for yin tang especially, I would recommend using essential oils like lavender or maybe rose geranium diluted those are really calming and they're not too pungent because you're going to have essential oils basically very close to your eyes and you don't want to make you want to make sure that they're not too pungent or aromatic that it would cause irritation in your eyes again we're trying to achieve a state of calm <laughs> with the acupressure points with the essential oils or just using your fingers on these points Another thing I'm offering to our community is while we're sheltering in place every Friday on Instagram, I am offering meditations based on living with the five elements, the series that I've been doing. I also have an ebook available. We'll show you the link to that in the show notes as well. And every Friday at noon Pacific on Instagram, I'm doing a different meditation on a different, uh, element in Chinese medicine. So I go through different elements each week 
and this week is going to be the fire element. And so we'll talk more about how to uh, do meditation focused on the heart. Thank you so much. You can find me all over social media at Jakuto Akyu. And you can see that on your screen because it's a little hard to spell my last name. And um, thank you very much for being here. And now take it away, Kate. And I'm so glad you could make it. And thank you, Denise, uh, for that really lovely, simple understanding of how to become calm through these. I'm going to use that tonight, the yin tang. Um, so as a body centered life coach, my contribution to <clears throat> this uh, conversation about how to remain centered during challenging times is to work with um, movement and sound to uh, directly affect, as Denise's work certainly does, um, recalibrate or attune the body to a more self-regulated state. So I want us first, if we could see the next slide, we can remember for a moment <clears throat> the complexity of our central nervous system in the brain. Um, I want to just make two points about uh, this complex um, system of our nervous system here, our brain, is that um, evolutionarily speaking, um, the progression of development of the brain starts at that reptilian complex at the base of the brain, that red bulb at the base. And then um, as we have developed over millions of years, the brain has developed progressively towards the limbic system and the latest evolutionary ev uh, area is the neocortex. So it's, um, it's interesting to know that we've survived, I don't know how many uh, hundreds and millions of years. Uh, so we are a very complex, um, responsive organism. What I want to say is in the brain, there are 12, you'll probably remember this, 12 cranial nerves. And the cranial nerves originate in the brain, but they leave the brain and uh, travel into the body in different ways. Uh, the largest of those nerves is what we're going to be focusing on today, and it's called the vagus nerve. And uh, it is the largest of the cranial nerves, and um, it's kind of the superstar right now in research, and I'll show you why. This gentleman, his name is uh, Stephen Porges, Dr. Stephen Porges. I have a lot of respect for him. He's devoted his life as a um, neuroscience researcher in psychology to the function of the uh, vagus vagus nerve and um, has really illuminated how that nerve itself it plays into our, uh, our modulation of our moods and um, emotional states and also our capacity to feel safe and capable of meaningful um, relational um, states, um, social engagement. So I wanted you to meet uh, Dr. Stephen Porges, and his theory is called the polyvagal theory. If you're, if you're a, a nervous system nerd and you want to <clears throat> look him up on YouTube, there's a wealth of information there. So this is uh, just to give um, a little deeper understanding of the um, circuitry, you could say, and, and the labyrinth of engagement of this vagus nerve. Um, vagus is Greek for wanderer, and you can kind of see how it earned its name by uh, seeing uh, as that as that tenth cranial nerve leaves uh, right along the sides of the neck, and then it, it migrates down into the central cavity of the body, but what's remarkable about it is it hooks up 
every organ system um, so that there's, it creates this network of communication. Uh, now there's something I wanna say about this. You know, in the, since March 15th, when we here in California started sheltering in place, um, what have we been seeing on the media? I want to make, I'm, I'm making this point to say, let me back up for a moment. Um, uh, the, the, thi the thing that's remarkable about the vagus is it, it creates a communication pathway from the body's processing of incoming information from the environment, which uh, that's called neuroception. We, we, we're perceiving through the body an enormous amount of data at all times. And that flows into the body. Different organs are taking data from the environment. And that messaging system then gets channeled right up to the brain. So, and then the brain makes, a, 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 makes sense of it and sends data back down. Uh, and that's the super highway between the brain and the body, and how the vagus got named the mind-body nerve. Uh, but, but this is interesting. If you just think of the media you've been seeing in the last, what is it, two months? We've been seeing body bags, uh, people um, losing um, uh, just uh, whether they're medical professionals rushing around the hospital, um, conversations with different people out of Washington, having a sense there's not a clue of what's happening with this uh, coronavirus. We've been taking in images and sounds that, um, that indicate a lot of unknown and a lot of um, potential life threat, or directly we're seeing images of life threat. So our neuroception is taking that in and it's triggering our, 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 the central vagus, which is having us all collectively be on the alert. So I thought it would be useful to, to, um, to take a look at this next slide. Here we go. And I want to direct my comments now just so we can get a bite size of how we can uh, regulate ourselves. Similar to what Denise is saying, you know, if we, if we just stop long enough to touch the yin pang or the point there at the knee, we're, we're participating directly with our central nervous system. So <clears throat> this is what I wanted to show you today is, um, that the, in the yellow, of course, is the vagus and it's coming, exiting the, the skull uh, just around the ears. And then it, it innervates all the way richly down the side of the neck. So this nerve has a lot to do with the expression of our, um, our, our facial mask, you know, our gestural muscles here in the, in the face. It also has a lot to do with uh, the movement of the jaw. And uh, like I said, the expressiveness of the face the movement of the tongue, but also the vocal folds are innervated here. Um, so today I thought um, I, I worked out a little video for you to see of, of three practices that will stimulate just this area of the neck. And what I want you to appreciate is if let's say you're anxious and you move your head a little bit, uh, this is called orienting, right? How we check out our world. Um, uh, that will already begin to modulate a new, a new a tone. We call it vagal tone. So you're about to see uh, a little video. I hope you enjoy it. Three practices. One of them will, will be, um, uh, we're going to start with just a deep breathing. Uh, with with an exhalation on the sigh uh, with with a sigh that will be shown to to start uh, tuning this instrument 
then that flows into the lion's roar, which really activates a great deal of the mouth, face, uh, neck. And it closes with a seed syllable sound of Aum. So um, please enjoy and please participate in the uh, process of those three exercises just as an experiment to see how you land this is our little teaching video that will incorporate uh, toning that vagus nerve that we just talked about, how those uh, vagal um, fibers come down from the brain, uh, innervating the ear, coming down through the throat, and then they move on down through the viscera. But our work today, I thought I wanted to put together um, a useful little 10 minute practice that will uh, really impact and stimulate uh, these fibers of the vagus. As you can see, again, when we move the neck, when we do some orienting with our head, uh, that's going to stimulate the vagus. All of our vocal sounds are related to the vagus and um, all the striated gestural muscles of the face, including the tongue, related to the vagal tone. So the three parts of the 10 minute practice would, are, are, let me tell you what they are. We start with the, <clears throat> the breathing practice that will extend the exhale. Okay, we'll, I'll introduce that in a moment. That's important for starting to slow down the central nervous system <clears throat> and bringing us into a uh, parasympathetic function. Uh, number two is we're going to work with the lion stretch or the lion roar that I'm sure 90% of you have seen uh, in yoga practice. So that's going to engage this jaw, the tongue, the eyes, and some sound. And then we'll resolve the three-part practice with a seed syllable of A-O-U-M. Okay, Aum. And we'll do that together. I'm going to introduce each one of these phases. I'll do one to demonstrate, and then there'll be two more. And I'd invite you to join me. Okay, great. So here we go. The first part is the deepening of the breath. I'm going to invite a hand on the chest, rest one on your butt belly, and then as you breathe in through the nose, let your belly expand on the inhale. On the exhale, through the mouth, ah. Taking plenty of time to let all that air out. Okay? Simple, let's join me please. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, throat. Ah. All the way out. Great, once more, inhaling through the nostrils. Ah. You'll notice the slow, more slowed down you get, the longer the exhale will be. Great, so now moving right into phase two of the practice is the lion roar or the lion stretch. If you've never seen this before, don't be afraid. <laughs> but I do ask you to think of the last time you've seen a film where a tiger or a lion is yawning perhaps. Hmm? Okay, and that's what we're gonna do now and it really mobilizes all the terrain of the face and the neck. So here we go, what, what it is, it looks like this. We breathe in through the nose. On the exhale, we drop the jaw, the tongue comes out and the eyes get big. So here it is, inhale. All the way out. <laughs> Let's do it together, don't be afraid. <laughs> Inhale through the nose. Exhale, tongue comes out, drop the jaw. <sighs> we never
never open the jaw, right? So one more time, inhale through the nostrils, tongue comes out, go for it. <laughs> it's wonderful. Now just relax everything, let your facial mask soften. And what I like to do here is just go, I like to just shake, wobble the flesh of the face, just a little bit. You're very courageous. Now the third part is this A-O-U-M. I think you can see it at the bottom of the screen. It's a seed syllable, and this is what it sounds like. Um, the sound will vibrate your heart. It will also vibrate the sides of your throat. When we make a seed sound, it's not for a performance. It's really to stimulate the tissues, okay? So it's more intimate. So we have our fingers resting gently at the side of the neck. We breathe in through the nostrils. Think of the letters. Again, we're stretching out that exhalation. Got it? Ah, oh, ooh, mm. All the way out. Let's practice twice together. Inhale, nostrils. Ah. You can feel that vibration here, huh? Do it one last time. Inhale, nostrils. Oh. Beautiful. Now just pause and savor what's occurring inside. Mm -hmm. Just savor it. And so if you practice that little triptych of mm -hmm. three practices together, it's about 10 minutes if you do each one like four times. Take your time and you will be more engaged, more centered, more equanimous, to use a big word, by the end of it than when you started. It's good to do with your morning meditation. It's nice to do before sleep at night. Okay, enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, and, and thank you all for listening to that. And um, it's a pleasure. Uh, that uh, video, by the way, is available to you. If you want one, we'll send it to you. While we're waiting, Kate, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to focus on next week in next week's segment. Uh, I know next week, next week, I'm going to continue with toning the vagus, but introduce the diaphragm, uh, the, the anatomy of the diaphragm and how, uh, how our breathing as a regulator, uh, also in how it physiologically impacts the heart. I think that's quite interesting. Oh yeah, and I'm also gonna work with a, a breath called navel radiation, which I think would be helpful. And then um, talk about rocking the joints and how that um, helps ground us. So, Great. That's my part. What's your part, Denise? Well, I'm gonna talk about moxibustion and we'll talk more about that. That's an herb that we uh, burn close to the skin and we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. There's a question in the chat from Robin about essential oils. I'll probably touch a little more on essential oils as well next week. And I'll do some acupressure points, talk about some acupressure points that you can use essential oils and moxibustion on that will help with the lungs and the breathing and the diaphragm to tie it into what Kate's segment is next week as well. Let's tell you next week we'll be here again next Thursday at noon 
and also on Thursday the 28th at noon again for about 45 minutes or so. There's two more sessions in other words, right? Yes, two more sessions. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're curious about anything you've heard here, please uh, contact us. Kate is going to be offering something for our viewers. I believe. Uh, yes, uh, and the offering today is if you would like um, either a copy of the that the three segment exercise to practice as a video and or uh, written out. I can forward that to you. Great. That's great. Thank you. And I will have on my website on the contact page is my living with the five elements meditation ebook that you can get and we'll also have a link for that in the show notes for you and as a reminder if you want to see this again and if you want to share it with people we're going to have links to the replay and it will be on youtube and facebook very soon and please share comment and like our pages we really appreciate it and we have one more great big thank you to say and that is to allison yes I yes allison. Yay. allison victor <laughs> stream with allison she had she made this possible today because we certainly couldn't do it on our own allison took care of all the video and the audio and now we can have a dance party that's allison there right there on your screen thank you allison and, we and we're so grateful to you, you Alice. We're considering you a superstar. In yes. The, in the realm of <laughs> streaming. So, um, really can recommend Allison highly to any of you who want to get your groove on around um, expressing through video, video and social media channels. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We hope you stay safe. And remember, we are in this together. We hope to see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to work with you, Denise. Thank you. You too, Kate. Bye. Bye. Bye.